Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Signal Processing Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, signal processing, robotics, machine learning, optimization, etc. In this Simulink tutorial we explain how to use Import block shown over here and Outport block shown over here. Outport blocks are very important since they can be used to link signals from our system to some destination outside of our system. Furthermore, they can be used to connect signals flowing from our system to some other system. And of course, they can be used to export the data to our MATLAB workspace from our model. On the other hand, import blocks can be used to link signals from outside of our system into our system. For example, in MATLAB workspace or in some file, we can define an input signal for this system over here. And we can link these signals to our system by using the import block. Knowing how to use and manipulate with import and output block can give you a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility when you develop your model. But before I start, I would like to briefly mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this free video tutorial as well as other video tutorials on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. In this video tutorial, I will teach you the following. First, I will teach you how to define a signal in MATLAB workspace such that you can link this signal with the import system. Then I will teach you how to create this simple block. And then I will teach you how to export the output of this system by using the outport block. This system is relatively simple. It consists of an integrator and it will simply integrate the input signal. Over here I will plot the original input signal and the integrated signal. Let us run this simulation and let's see what happens. Double click on scope and let's see the output. The input, represented by the yellow line, is the sinusoidal signal. The output is the integral of the input signal, that is, it's a cosine function. Okay, let's start. The first step is, of course, to define an input signal. Then, we will define a MATLAB data structure that will be used to link this input signal to the import block of our model. I will call my data structure simply as data structure. This data structure will have a member va variable or better to say a member vector called time. The time will start from zero with an increment of 0.01 and the vector will end at 10. Over here I will transpose this row vector since I need to use the MATLAB convention for defining the data structures. Let's see our data structure. Okay, here it is. And let's see the stored vector. Perfect. It's a column vector. The next step is to define our input signal. I will call the input signal simply as input signal. And this input signal will be sinusoidal function of time. However, here I made one error. Since I cannot use time, I need to specify data structure dot time. So keep in mind this. And here's our input signal. Obviously, it's a column vector, and that's very important. The next step is to incorporate our input signal inside of our data structure. 
we can do that by typing this data structure dot signals one dot values is equal to input signal. This will assign our input signal to signals with an index one and its values. Finally, we need to specify the dimension of our signals. That is the dimension of signals with the index one and the dimension is one. This is because our input signal has only a single column. So let's do that. Let's see the output. Okay, now our data structure has time and signals field. So let's look into the signals field. Okay, here we have values. This input vector is stored in values and dimensions is equal to one. Next, type simulink to start simulink environment. Click here on create the blank model. And let's start with modeling. First, we will add an integrator. To add an integrator, I will double click over here and I will type integrator. Here's our integrator. Expand this block. Next, let us define an import block. To do that, again, double left click and type import. Here it is. Okay, expand this block a little bit. Link the integrator with the import block and continue. Next, I will define a mux mux block. This block will be used to plot inputs and outputs on the same graph, connect this port to the input, connect this port to the output, and over here add scope. To add the scope, again, double left click, type scope, and add the scope. Connect the scope with the MUX block. Next, we need to add the out port block. To do that, double left click, type out port, expand this block and connect the out port block to our output. So far, so good. Everything is okay. Double click on the out port block and over here, give the name to our block out signal and you can give it a name or a number or a letter. I will use Q. Okay. The next step is to link our data structure that's used to define the input signal with this import block. To do that, we need to click on modeling and we click on model settings. Over here, we need to click on Data Import Export. We select this part over here, Erase, and type, type the name of the data structure. The name of data structure is exactly data structure. Double check that by going back to MATLAB block or workspace. Here's the data structure and make sure that this match perfectly match the name given over here. These other parameters are not important for the time being. Just to briefly explain you this block over here, when we run the simulation, the MATLAB will automatically save some variables to our workspace. And these variables will be this output and time. I will talk about this later on in this video. Click on OK. Then, go back to the Simulink diagram, click over here, port number should be 1, signal attributes should not be changed except for this part over here. Port dimensions should be equal to 1 because we have only a single signal and 
this dimension should match the dimension specified over here. So keep in mind that. Okay, now we are ready to run our simulation. Go back to the simulation and click on run. And let's hope that we will not have any error. Seems that we don't have errors. However, to verify that, double click over here on our scope and everything looks how it should look. We can see our input signal represented by the yellow line and the integral of the output signal represented by the blue line. Of course, we can play with these blocks, we can modify our model, you can make the model more complex. However, for the time being, and in order to make this video as short as possible, I will not explain how to create a more complex system in this video. Next, let us extract the simulation data and let us independently plot the simulation data in our MATLAB window over here. That is, I want to demonstrate how to use the output port, that is, the data generated by this port in your MATLAB workspace. For that purpose, type whose to see what happened. This is our memory space. Over here, we can see this data structure out. And go back to Simulink window, click again on Modeling, click on model parameters, click over here, and you will see that this part over here is selected. That is, single simulation output will be stored in out. And that's precisely the variable over here. Let's investigate this variable further. Type out, and let's see the output. Aha! Uh -huh. We can see that this is a special data structure, simulink.simulation output, perfect. Let us extract the data, type y out, okay, and I can see over here a very interesting observation. We can see that the name of the output is out signal q, and that's precisely the output provided by the out port. Since over here we can see out signal Q. Another thing to keep in mind and to remember is that the name of the variable specified over here, Y out, is precisely this variable in our MATLAB workspace. Here we obtain this message, use braces to access, modify, or add elements using index. So I can type something like this, uh -huh. and I obtain another data structure. For us, the most important part of these data structures are the values stored in this variable over here. So let's see what's stored in that variable. Aha, uh -huh, another data structure. We can see our data and we can see time. So to see our data, we will type dot data. Perfect. This output corresponds actually to the blue function shown on our scope. That is, this is the output of the integral. Let us now try to reproduce this graph independently in our MATLAB workspace. Here I will define a figure, I'll call this figure 1, and then I will type plot out y out 1 dot values dot data, this is our data, and I found that by looking into this data structure, and I also need time. So over here I will type something like this and I will correct this part and I will enter time. So let's see what happens. Okay, perfect. This is our output and this output is precisely the output shown on our scope, the blue line. Perfect. Let us match the color blue. Then let us plot our input signal. Our input signal is defined over here. 
it's an input signal and we need to specify its time. Its time is defined in the data structure and let's specify the color and the color will be yellow. Here you need to add hold on and let's see the result. Here it is. Here's our input signal. It's a yellow line and you cannot see this yellow line very well. So I will change the color to red and let's see the output. Perfect. The blue line is the output signal and the red line is the input signal. And that's precisely what's shown over here. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.